Welcome back to Echo, and now we're going to begin Jenna's route. Now, Jenna's route is not completed at the time of recording, so if all of a sudden I stop uploading Jenna's route, it's because there's nothing to upload. So, yeah. Anyways, let's begin. I watched Jenna's tail disappear through the sagebrush. They're headed down the same trail that I had used to get to Lake Emma. TJ! TJ did seem to head off in that direction while we were fighting, though I can't imagine he'd go to the lake. I should go with them to help find the links. I'm also a little worried about Leo. It's been a long time since I've seen him that pissed. When we get there, I find Leo leaning back with his rear end up against a big boulder on the shore. Their sweet memories fled. That rock is almost as much a staple of my childhood as the actual lake is. It's weird like that. Every memory I have of that place is dreamy and gold-tinted, but always has a hint of sadness about it, no matter what the situation was. Jenna standing in front of Leo, her arms folded as she talks to him. I can't see his face, but his posture is sagging and his ears are down, looking way older than he actually is. I stand back for a while, feeling awkward about intervening at this point. Leo occasionally shakes his head, then takes out his phone to look at it. I can see Jenna getting annoyed, but then she says something and Leo turns his head to look back at me. I seize up for a second, but Jenna is beckoning me with her paw while Leo isn't looking. I start stumbling over the rocks towards them as Leo looks back down at his phone and Jenna starts walking towards me. Just talk to him. He'll listen to you. I'm going to stay with Jenna. I look towards Leo. Hunched forward, ears down, looking like an angry gargoyle perched on the ledge of a church. Hold on, Jenna. I turn back around to face her. Hmm? I look back over my shoulder at Leo, watching his ears flick towards us. I think... I think Leo wants to be left alone. Jenna folds her arms and looks past me. You sure? I thought you could get him to calm down. I look at Jenna for a while, realizing that I'd just rather talk to someone more collected rather than a big angry wolf. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, alright. Should we head back then? Okay. As we start disappearing into the sagebrush, I look back in time to catch a glimpse of Leo looking over his shoulder. I look back down at the ground, wondering if it would have been a good idea to at least tell him that I felt he like he needed time alone. I notice Jenna looking around, her huge ears perked up, wide like sails. What are you looking for? TJ. If it was up to me, I'd be leaving TJ alone as well, but Jenna always worried about him. I follow her through the sagebrush in silence, unsure of what to say. So, why didn't you want to hang back with Leo? I move along with her for a while, thinking it over. I don't know, when he's in a bad mood, he's really only good for a fight, you know? Hmm. I catch up and start walking alongside her since I was starting to taste the dirt being kicked up by her feet. Yeah, thought it would be a good idea to let him cool down for a bit. I sort of envy the way she's dressed right now, with her short shorts and tank top. Jeans don't exactly breathe well. I finally start to see our picnic again, Carl still sitting in the lawn chair, his head hanging over the back and smoke wafting around him. Jenna stops and puts her paw to her hips, looking around. Where do you think he went? There aren't many places he could have gone. Her eyes seem to settle and I follow her gaze to a clump of brush and trees next to the river. If TJ had anywhere to hide in that short amount of time that he did, that would really be the only place he could have done it. Without a word, Jenna starts in that direction. I tag along awkwardly, kind of feeling like I'm invisible to her right now. As soon as we break through the brush, we spot TJ. I watch as Jenna immediately goes to his side and sits down. TJ's ears perk, but otherwise he doesn't look up. After a while, Jenna wraps an arm around TJ's shoulders. I see him bristle for a second, and Jenna says something to him that I don't quite catch. Finally, he leans in and hugs her, and I can hear him sniffling. I'm starting to feel like I'm intruding, and I start to back away. But Jenna sees me and jerks her head. Where are you going, Chase? Come here. TJ pulls back from Jenna and starts wiping at his eyes. Chase? Uh, yeah. 
I feel like TJ would be embarrassed to have me around, and he probably is, but Jenna's pretty insistent, so I move forward to stand next to them. I was just telling TJ about the time we used to float the river on the old inner tubes. I smile and sit down next to Jenna, stretching my legs out. Do you remember that, Chase? His voice is strained and a little crackly, but he seems to have things under control now. Do I? Always thought it was ridiculous to use one of those things when you could just float on your back. Sorry, we're not all floaties, Chase. We sit there for a while, and now it isn't as awkward. I feel like if it were just me and TJ, things would be a lot more tense. Jenna has a way of making things feel natural and easy. It's like her confidence is a shield to all my weird, awkward stupidity. I hear TJ shift and sniffle as he wipes his face again. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean... Nope. You stop right there, TJ. He does stop. It's hard not to when she has a tone like that. Flynn is an absolute dick. Never let him affect how you feel about things. He only thinks about himself and how he feels. Right, Chase? I feel like this is just a little bit unfair to Flynn. Yeah, he was pretty selfish, but he did care about other people. At least, I think he does, even though he hardly ever admits it. Probably best to ag agree with Jenna right now, though. Yeah, he's... Uh, he's not thinking straight right now. I think coming here might have been a bad idea. That's That really shouldn't matter. In fact, we probably should have gone to the lake. What happened happened, and there's not much we can do about it. Letting it absolutely rule over our lives like this, to the point of preventing us from going where we want to go, that's pretty messed up. We all went through it, and it was awful. But we stayed friends, and here we are. Maybe we should celebrate that instead of accusing each other of bullshit? Yeah. Of course, what Flynn had been saying wasn't completely bullshit. None of us really know exactly what happened. Except for TJ. I didn't have any reason to come here, and if I had the same mindset as Flynn, I never would have. TJ glances over at Jenna. Ha how are things with... With you and my family, same as it has been for the past five years. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could try? Jenna sighs deeply. Sorry, I, I didn't mean... No, TJ, it's fine. It's just... She seems to be thinking hard about what she's going to say. Man, the things that Jenna could say about her family. I have too many bad memories about that. That family is completely broken. Like, there's no fixing it. Going back there would just mean trouble. I've learned my lesson. With Adam and Dad gone, it's just my mom and Jeremy now. Anyway, not much of a family to go back to. Has your dad not... Has anyone seen him since? As far as I know, no. But I don't really care if he is back. And if he really is missing... Well, Mom never filed a missing persons report, so I guess it wouldn't matter. I'm sorry. Why? You're not the one that messed it all up. TJ looks away again, his ears down. Jenna sighs and puts an arm back around TJ's shoulders. And here I am bringing everyone down when the point was to make you feel better. Chase, remind us of something happy. I jump, then scramble after being put on the spot. Uh, remember when we called it Yee River? I remember when you called it Yee Chase. You had a bit of a speech impediment back then. Uh, yeah. I remember that. It was kind of cute. It's quiet for a moment, then Jenna gives TJ a little nudge. So, how's school going, TJ? It's not bad. I got accepted into the athletic pro training program, which is really cool because they're really selective. I think I'm one of the 20 that they chose. Wow, that's fantastic, TJ. TJ smiles, though he's still looking at his feet. But thanks. Hey, but you got into Weston. I did. I furrow my brow at that. Hey, come on, Weston is like the stereotypical best school in the country. She looks over at me and smiles. It's great, I know. 
Just a lot of stress. Sometimes I'd like to get a break. That was a little surprising to hear from Jenna. Usually she was so energized and had a get her done attitude about almost anything. That's why I assume she got into Weston in the first place. Maybe you should take a break then. It's kind of up to you, isn't it? Just because I want to doesn't mean I need it. Hey, Tej, were you wanting to go on a hike while we were here? Yeah, I know things are a bit bad right now, but it could be fun to go. Of course, TJ. I was planning to go with you anyway. Oh, cool. At that point, all of TJ's gloomy demeanor disappears. His tail quirked and his ears up. Jenna looks sideways at me, meaningfully. Uh, yeah, definitely didn't want to do that. I'm not even doing anything and I'm already sweating buckets and looking at the shiny water longingly. I would have jumped in the water by now if TJ wasn't here. For some reason, that would seem inappropriate. Right then, I feel something press down hard on my paw, which is splayed out behind me. Looking over, I see that Jenna has her paw on mine, leaning on it. Oh, um, yeah, definitely I'm going. Yes! Jenna lifts her paw off mine, and I gulp. It didn't really hurt, but something about her sudden touching me like that. It's settled then. We should probably get back. We want to get a lot of rest before the hike tomorrow. Tuesday. Jenna's kind of controlling, isn't she? So, where we headed, TJ? Jenna sounds like she's in a much better mood than yesterday. We all are, really. The canyon, Echo Canyon more specifically. You've ever been? He looks back at us with a grin. Nope. Um, no, me neither. His ears fall down a little. Well, you know, the town is named after it, right? How have you not been there before? I shrug and Jenna laughs. Because you have to walk the three miles of snake-infested desert to get there. That makes me bristle. Because there definitely are snakes here, and I can't help but scan the brush. You really shouldn't worry about that. They're more afraid of you than you are of them, and they do have a rattle, so just listen for it. Jenna grins and looks straight at me. Yeah, you're right. The most dangerous animal you'll find on these paths is the blonde. An involuntary shiver works up my spine. Jenna! TJ frowns. That's even less likely, Jenna. Great, now that you said it, I'm going to be all uptight for the rest of the hike. You're welcome! Alright, let's get going. We want to make it to the top by noon. A few hours in and TJ's quite a bit ahead of us. I feel a little bad about it, but I think he likes it that way, probably wants to think after yesterday. Jenna and I walk side by side, and she's making sure that I drink water the entire time. You should be done with that by now. She gestures at the water bottle, which is still half full. Ugh, come on. I've had like three already. I take a sip, then almost snort water as Jenna tips up the bottom of the bottle. Hey, I made TJ a promise here. You're an otter. You need it. Blah, stop! I cough a few times, water running down my chin and chest. Even though it feels good, I wipe it away with the forearm. Jenna chuckles before we start walking again. Actually, you don't really need more water than me or TJ, as he could tell you. The water thing is actually more of a physiological need as opposed to a physical one. Oh yeah? I look over at my wet camera bag, which definitely didn't need water. Yeah, you know, back when there really weren't any ethics in research, they separated an otter pup from water, never allowed it to swim. That makes me pause. Technically, in this day and age, otters don't really need to swim. A trip to the supermarket gets all that done. But something about not being allowed to be in the water, to feel the cool, isolated space that is that I so long to be in. What happened? Depression, disengaged, neurotic in general. Then, when they were done, they just set him loose into the world. He killed himself a few years later. Wow. Yep, I mean, ethics are in place now, of course. Not that the psychological association is any better. You probably heard about their role in the whole advanced interrogations controversy. Like the waterboarding stuff? Yeah, but it really makes you realize how powerful the brain is. It's not all physical necessities. 
must have been pretty awful for him that he killed himself. I can't imagine. Talking about offing oneself, though, it's got me thinking about Jenna's brother. So, uh, you want to talk about Adam? No. Well, I sort of did, but I don't think that would be appropriate at all. I was just wondering, are you going to see your family sometime during the trip? We talked about it earlier, but I guess you really didn't give an answer. Jenna snorts loudly, tossing her head back. You're kidding, right? I feel my cheeks flush, knowing that I might have said something really offensive. I'm not really in tune with how things are with Jenna's family. Leo and sometimes even Flynn dealt with most of that. I mean, aren't you a little bit curious? Curious is the wrong word. Oh? Maybe morbidly curious. Anyway, they haven't even bothered to contact me since I left, so as far as I can tell, they're not missing me. Guys, there's a giant dip over here, so watch your steps. TJ's quite a bit ahead of us now. I don't even see him anymore around all the boulders and brush. I pick up the pace and Jenna follows. Well, do you miss them? She doesn't say anything for a while, which tells me she's really thinking about it. No. She says it, finally, surprising me a little with her bluntness. At least, not my mom and dad, not even Adam. Really? Jenna shifts around as she grabs another water bottle out of the backpack and hands it to me. Adam? He had problems. Mom and dad fucked him up, of course. But he took it out on me. He did some messed up stuff. I debate whether or not I should ask what exactly that messed up stuff was, but I'm way too scared of what it might be. Jeremy, though? I guess I wouldn't mind seeing him again. I give her an incredulous look. See, Jeremy's the one I would have thought you wouldn't want to talk to. Yeah, now Clint is the one that fucked up Jeremy. But he was really a good person before then. Jeremy was, for as long as I can remember, a royal dick. A bullet to me and TJ and Carl. Along with Clint, he terrorized our childhood. That is, until Leo showed up. I'll never forget the day Leo rammed Jeremy's head into a tree and punched Clint so many times in the face, his eyes almost swelled shut. Of course, Leo never got in trouble because neither of their parents gave a shit. Environment is really important to how you develop as a person. I think for a second. Well, you turned out all right. Which is debatable. Environment and temperament make us who we are. Some people, some people can take more. It's clear that her temperament was a lot stronger than mine, whatever that was. If I had parents like that, I don't know how I would have survived. I take another gulp of water. It's then that I realize how badly I need to pee. Looking off to the side, I spot a rather large boulder surrounded by sagebrush. Hey, you go ahead. I gotta take a piss. Jenna quirks her muzzle and folds her arms. Sure you don't want me to wait for you? Uh, I'm kidding. She turns around and starts walking up the trail. Watch out for spiders. Ha ha ha. Sometimes Jenna's jokes were so dry that I had a hard time figuring out if she really was joking or not. I dodge my way around the sagebrush and tumble weeds towards the boulder and start to piss. Jenna's really an enigma. She's nice enough and smart, but she has this edge about her that always has me on guard for some reason. For prickles on the back of my neck. I'm not sure what it is, but something isn't right. I look left and right in the small chance that someone else is coming up the trail. It's a weird feeling like this in broad daylight. Normally, I don't get so uptight unless it's dark. I hear it's the opposite with species that can see better at night. Something's watching you from the brush. A shiver runs up my spine and I tremble under its influence. As if its own accord, my head whips around, immediately focusing on a clump of sagebrush 30 feet away. And right there, in the middle, someone's face is staring at me. I could only call it a face because there are two eyes and a mouth, but I've never seen anything like it. It's flat, wide, and stretched out, sagging where the chin should be. I can't help myself. I yelp loudly and stumble to the side 
as I whip my body around to defend myself, somehow conscious of the fact that my dick is still out. Then, it all comes together. I stare for a few seconds longer, then force out a tight, high-pitched laugh. Are you fucking kidding me? It's a rock. A white rock and the sagebrush twigs have fallen over it perfectly to give it similar features to that of a face. I sigh and rub my own face with both paws, feeling my heart hammering in my chest. I always did this shit to myself. As I lower my paw, I notice a wet streak across the left side of my pants. I hadn't finished peeing yet. <laughs> Fucking son of a bitch. I hiss and turn back to the boulder, trying to work myself into a peeing mood again. Finally, as I start finishing up, the prickling feeling on my neck starts up again. I try to ignore it, but it's getting worse and worse. I shake my hips around a few times, then zip up and start back around the boulder. It's at that point that I give a quick glance back at the brush. The rock isn't there anymore. I stare, one paw on the boulder, feeling my first start to bristle all over my body. What? Maybe it's because I'm at a different angle now? The feeling of being watched is overpowering, though, and it's coming from the other side of the boulder, where I was just at. I look up the trail, and I don't see TJ or Jenna at all. I can't even hear them. I look back towards the boulder, wondering if I'm losing my mind. Gritting my teeth, I turn away and start back up the trail at a brisk walk, knowing that I'm acting just like a little kid. Despite that, I feel myself start to panic a little, and soon enough I'm running up the trail and not even looking back. We made it! He says it, even though he's already sitting down on what looks like a rock bench. He probably got there a good 10 minutes before us. I'm sweating all over the place, but Jenna seems fine. It's embarrassing because it's only now that I realize she's been hanging back because of me. Group hug! TJ stands and holds his paws out. I want to protest because of how gross I must look, but Jenna sort of forces me into it as TJ walks up to us. This was a lot of fun, guys. Thanks for coming. Well, we're glad to have fun, even if we weren't able to keep up. As we lean back from the hug, I see Jenna's nose wrinkle. I press my tail a little closer to my rear. All right, let's eat. We sit down on the rock bench and TJ starts pulling the sandwiches out of a soft cooler. He's been so excited about our trip that he'd gone to the convenience store by himself at 5 in the morning and made us all sandwiches. It's actually pretty good too. There's even avocado on them, even if it's the packaged mushy kind according to him. We eat in silence for a while and looking over I can see that Jen is deep in thought, chewing slowly. What's up? She shrugs and swallows. Just thinking about how this might be the last time we really get to hang out, is all. That's kind of a sad thing to say. Well, think about it. I graduate in a few months, then I'll be off to the other side of the country. Then you'll graduate, Chase, and I don't think you'll be sticking around here. Maybe. And you, TJ? You might just leave the country. And that would make sense. TJ's parents are back in his hometown. I think we'll get together again, it's just a matter of planning it right. It might be a while, but it'll happen and there's always the internet. I'm just saying, I hope Flynn can get over himself before the end of our trip. I don't think this should be our big send off. We still got time. I lean back and drape my arms over the back of the bench, closing my eyes. I really want to take my shirt off. The fabric is almost soaked through and it's clinging in a really gross way to my fur. The sun is beating down on me, shining bright red through my eyelids. If only there was a pond here, I'd be able to sink to the bottom, the sun reduced to a shimmering silver. My type really isn't built for this kind of weather. I feel Jenna shift next to me and suddenly I feel her nose up against my ear and I shiver a little. What the hell was she doing? I start to turn my head towards her. Um... Chase, do you... do you need some muskoff? I open my eyes, then squint against the brightness of the sun. What? I said... She leans forward, obviously not wanting TJ to hear. She laughs a little before she starts again. You're smelling a little strong. Instantly, my ears burn, and I scoot away, instinctively lowering my eyes. Shit, sorry. 
No, it's all right. You didn't know you were going on a hike before you packed, so I have some. TJ's looking over at us curiously as he nibbles on his salad wrap. Ears perked, and I don't know why, but I glare at him, already humiliated enough. He frowns. What? Nothing. Jenna's just telling me that I stink. Oh. Jenna laughs, then reaches over to her backpack and opens the top zipper, talking in a normal voice now. It's a female brand, so it's not as strong, but it should get the job done. Thanks. I grumble and snatch it from her palm, instantly feeling shitty about it because I know she's just trying to be nice. Even though TJ and Jenna are probably the nicest people in our little group, it's still fucking embarrassing. I'd actually prefer Flynn's ribbing right now. I stalk off around a large bush and pull down my pants. The can is pink and covered in flowers. Great. I grab my tail and yank it up before giving my ass a good liberal dose of girl smells. Of course, if I'd known I'd be doing anything so sweat-inducing, I would have brought my own boy-smelling brand. But I'm stuck with this. Smelling like a girl in front of Jenna. Guess it's better than nothing. As I come back around the bush, I can tell something's off. TJ meets eyes with me, then quickly looks down, frowning. I glare, I'd honestly be happier if he just joined in with Jenna and laughed at me instead. She's buried her nose in her phone right now, which is annoying since she told me before the hike that phones weren't allowed. All done? She doesn't even look up, but points at the bag with a foot. Go ahead and stick it in the bag. I sigh and bend over to shove the can back in, then notice that it's been zipped closed again. Without thinking, I zip it back and widen the gap and immediately find a big, furry, orange and black spider glaring at me from the bag. I scream like a fucking girl and jump, dropping the can, stumbling back and falling flat on my ass as I trip over some rocks. I land on my tail wrong and a sense of jolt of pain up my back. Jenna, who already started laughing the moment I screamed, puts a paw on her muzzle. Only one, though, because the other is holding her camera phone, and she's filming the whole fucking thing. Oh god, are you okay? She's still smiling behind her paw. Fine. I guess I have a decision to make, whether to get mad or just shrug it off and laugh with them. I go with the latter and grin sheepishly. Well, I'd expect that from you, Jenna, but TJ? What the hell, man? TJ flinches, a sad look on his face. She told me she'd throw me off the cliff if I said anything. Jenna laughs again and puts her phone away before picking up the can and shoving it into the bag. Success! Where the hell did you even get that from? That one rest stop with a souvenir shop. Alright, everyone done? I know you need to get some shots of the canyon chase. Let's do that. I sit cross-legged next to Jenna a bit further back than she is with her legs dangling over the edge of the cliff. I guess someone that's so confident about her life and future isn't worried about falling 80 feet to her death. It's sort of the opposite of Carl, but with the same result. You know, one good thing about this place is stuff like this. Hanging off the edge of a cliff. Lack of people. The mountains. I miss that. I hear the mountains back east are small, like hills. That sounds nice too. She picks up a sizable rock and tosses it off the edge listening to the clatter and echo as it bounces down the cliff. Doesn't really matter though, I'd be living in a big city, way bigger than Peyton. Are you nervous? About living in a big city? No, I'm more anxious to get started with school actually. And of course, I'll miss you guys, too. A lot. She flicks her ears back at TJ, who's flat on his back under the tree behind us, snoring lightly. I wipe my forearms across my forehead, the oils from the waterproof fur sliding nastily against each other. Sorry, but... I pull off my shirt. I need to let my shirt air dry. It's fucking gross. She looks over at me, then her silver and turquoise necklace catching the, the light and flashing briefly. Jenna looks perfect, of course. The fur on her face and arms is brushed with a lay, held together by some kind of spray, probably. By comparison, I look like a soggy log covered in wet brown mold. <laughs> I blush and look down, the bravado I had worked up to take off my shirt dissipating under her gaze. She doesn't laugh though. 
I was wondering when you were going to take that off. Looks really uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm gross. It's not gross. It's just what your body does to survive. Jenna sometimes says things that I suspect carry a lot more meaning than what's on the surface level. But honestly, I'm too dumb to figure it out. I really hope my smell isn't overpowering the spray. But... I'm in the middle of leaning to the side to see if I can catch a whiff of my butt musk and I jolt back up. Huh? What was kind of gross is that there's another smell. Oh? Yeah. Did you pee yourself? It takes a second for me to register what she just asked. Then it hits me, and this time I have to close my eyes out of shame. Of course, she was going to smell that. Foxes can smell fucking everything on you that's happened in the last week. Yeah. Yeah, I did. She laughs this time, and I look away off into the canyon again. I know it can happen, but it just smells like it was a lot, is all. I sigh and lean back on my paws, letting my head hang back. I, ugh, I just... I debate telling her exactly what happened since it seems so childish, but it's not like she's being mean. She has a demeanor about her that just makes you want to talk. Must be that psych degree at work. I just saw something that scared me a little, so when I jumped, I got some on me. What did you see? She lays flat on her back, legs still dangling over the side with her paws behind her head, I guess so she can get a better look at me. I avoid looking right at her in case she thinks I'm staring. Okay, this is gonna sound stupid, but I just felt like I was being watched. You know when you psych yourself up and everything looks scary? Of course. So I felt that behind me, and when I looked, I saw what sort of looked like a face with some sagebrush. Just talking about it right now is getting my fur to prickle. I hadn't really thought about it since it happened, and now that I am, it's only now that I realize how weird it was. Huh, like a face you can recognize? No, no, it was sort of flat, like it didn't have a muzzle and white. I look back at Jenna, but she's not looking at me. Instead, it's like she's looking past me. That is weird. Yeah, yeah, but it was a rock. We're wired to recognize faces, so we find them in a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, the twigs and stuff were falling across it in such a way that it made it look like it had eyes and stuff, but then I realized it w what it was. But I jumped and got pee on myself, so that's what happened. What's weird is that when I was leaving, I couldn't see it anymore. I say the last part with a laugh, mostly to hide how freaked out I am about it. When I look at Jenna again, I see her fur on her neck has lifted a little. It was probably just the angle, though. Are you alright? Jenna looks back at me, and I can tell that she's debating whether or not to tell me something. I wait. Just made me think about when I was a kid. I hadn't thought about it for years, actually. I pause. Do you want to talk about it? I'm worried I'm about to open up a can of worms. It wasn't traumatizing or anything like that. Well, it was, actually, but it, it wasn't real. Did you see a face? It, yeah, not like yours, though. It was more of a red color. No. Yeah, not exactly like yours, though. It was more of a red color, but it was flat, too. That's what made me think of it. Whoa. Yeah, it had a body too, but I can't really re remember exactly what it was like. Did you dream it? No, not really a dream. At least, not in the sense that I was asleep when it happened. I just see it walking around in broad daylight sometimes. What the hell? Are these like real solid memories? Like it really happened? I don't know. It usually happened when I was sad or angry, like when Dad was having one of his moments. I just see it walk past the doorway or sit in the closet. Really? What the fuck? This was a long time ago, like, when I was five. I don't want you thinking I'm crazy, Chase. I don't. I saw things too as a kid. Yeah, I think you've told me. I had, and it's something I really don't want to think about right now. I'm pretty sure it's just something my mind made up, because I was under a lot of stress. The brain can make up whatever it wants, really. It's part of the reason why I went into the field that I did. I want to help figure these things out. Do you see it anymore? At all? She's quiet for a while, then shakes her head. No. My phone goes off, then, and I jump with a little yelp. 
Jenna laughs and it breaks the tension a little bit, so I laugh with her. I know you said no phones, but you already used yours, so I think I get a freebie. Hey, I had to record your reaction for posterity. Looking at the message, I see it's from Leo. Where are you? I stare at it for a second. It seems a little short. Usually Leo throws in some cheesy emoticon for everything. When he's not angry, of course. Jenna notices my expression. What's up? It's just Leo. I type out a quick response telling him I'm hiking with TJ and Jenna and did we forget to tell him that? Almost instantly I get a response. Yeah, you did. He's definitely got something up his ass. Wolfboy getting pissy? Uh, maybe? I can never tell with him. Jenna's phone goes off right then. Ah, speak of the devil. Since it seems like she's inviting me, I lean over to read her phone. What the hell? I feel myself getting a little angry. What the fuck's his problem? Jenna gives a little playful smirk as she sits up and puts her phone away without responding. Ah, he's just jealous. That gets me flustered for some reason. You think so? That and he probably wants us all to hang out together, which we should. But we need some time away before we can give Flynn another chance. Anyway, we should head back. If we start now, we can grab di dinner at the diner by 6. Jenna gets up and goes to wake up TJ, but I'm sort of lost in thought. I feel bad for Leo. Was he mad for me not talking to him by the lake yesterday? After being out in the desert for so long, it feels absolutely amazing to be sitting in the air-conditioned diner. Having already ordered our food, I lean back against the booth, my eyes feeling a little heavy. So thanks again for going out with me, guys. It wouldn't have been as much fun if there wasn't anyone to share it with. Of course, TJ. I had a lot of fun, too. I put in my affirmative as well, grinning. And sorry you guys had to put up with my slowness and smell. Ugh, stop apologizing for it. It's like your speech is against your own kind. I'll be sure next time that we don't do such a long trail. If there's any next time, I hope there is. Maybe. There's not exactly much else to do out here. The thought of hiking again makes my knees weak, but I don't say anything. So Chase, I have to ask, have you been dating around at Pueblo? The question takes me by surprise and I pause, looking at Jenna. TJ looks surprised as well, but looks at me curiously. It has been years since you and Leo were together proper. You two were pretty outspoken in all your social media pictures. TJ stirs some, from his initial shock at the topic shift and nods, speaking up. Yeah, in comparison to back in the day, you've been pretty quiet on that front. I feel myself cringe inwardly in remembrance of all that kissy selfies and cheesy song quotes we'd post. Leo did most of it, but I was by no means innocent. As of late, I haven't really posted much. Most of the people who are still in my timeline just rant about political stuff. As the two look on expectantly, I feel myself shift in the pleather diner seat uncomfortably. Well, uh, not really. Oh? Yeah, I guess after a relationship as long as Leo and I's, I've kind of just been focused on, you know, adulthood. Adulthood is difficult. A reasonable thing to keep you occupied. TJ nods with a broad smile, his big ears flopping a little. Well, have you engaged in anything more casual since? I feel myself blanch a little before recombobulating. TJ just looks confused, thankfully. I downloaded one of those gay apps for meeting guys. All it really does is make me feel like crap, though. I look sidelongs towards the links besides Jenna. He gives me a curious look. People on there can be pretty specious. I see a lot of no mustelets or no otters and no musk types. I met up with a few guys, but it's all pretty awkward and didn't go anywhere. Most didn't look like their profile pictures. That's awful. I can't imagine putting yourself up for that sort of thing. He pauses, then quickly holds up his paw defensively. I mean, meeting someone you like and love organically, I think that's a word, is important. Well, Chase here doesn't have that luxury. According to a study I read, about 1 out of every 25 people are gay. Then, the chances of both parties having mutual attraction lowers the compatibility chances even more so. 
The online component is almost a necessity depending on one's region, Echo seeming to be the bizarre exception. I see TJ's face shift to a guilty expression, the gray feline muttering a quiet O oh, before taking a long drink of water. I uninstalled it though when I visited my parents over Christmas. I did eventually reinstall it, but I guess I haven't looked at it much since then. I think you should check back on it. I'm actually a bit curious what sort of results you'll get in Echo. My mind reels back to 15 year old me posting a Photoshop picture of myself on Peyton List, mail for mail, and the horrible aftermath. I don't know, Jenna, probably wouldn't get much anyway. Most results would be from Peyton miles away. Plus, I'm pretty sure I already know the only result is going to be a certain shirtless gilla. Honestly, I'd hate to sound like one of those podcasts, but something has to be in the water here. First Flynn, then Leo, then you. I watched all of you growing up and turn out gay. I still remember you sitting on the edge of my bed, sniffling about your parents finding out and how much of a deviant you were. Completely unaware that I had the same sort of conversation with both Flynn and Leo about a year earlier. Oh god. I place my face in my palm. It is kind of weird, I guess. Jenna grins, then looks out the window. So, I need to ask you for a favor, Chase. I stiffen, wondering what the hell it might be after that conversation. I'm wondering if you could drive me to the mall. I want to get a few things. Oh, sure. What do you need? Jenna hesitates, and for the first time today, she's the one that seems embarrassed. Well, you know in Pueblo we don't exactly have a great comic book shop, even though it's huge. Oh yeah? I wouldn't really know. I never did go to that section of the mall. That's especially lacking in the manga section. I smile. I'd forgotten the way that, after getting her first job, I'd drive Jenna to the mall once a week and she'd buy her favorite manga. Jenna's still not looking at me, but I grin. Yeah, it'll be just like when we were in high school. Have you been keeping up on all those series? I remember being amazed at how much material was in those books compared to the comics, even if they weren't colored. Jenna looks back at me and I can see that she's a little relieved. Does she think I was going to make fun of her for it? I keep up with it online mostly. It's more for the old time's sake. Believe it or not, that mall has some of the happiest memories I've had of this place, aside from Leo's house. Of course I'd believe that. I guess there are a few special edition volumes I want to get that m they might have. I was always surprised in what they were able to bring in. Well, that's cool. You know, I watched an anime since I last saw you. Oh really? What was it? Uh, I can't really remember. Ichirohi? It was a long title. But it was about an old wolf guy that becomes a samurai. Ichirohi and o Inaru. She says it quickly with what sounds like to me as a perfect accent. <laughs> Maybe that sounds about right. Jenna makes a face like she swallowed a lemon. It is. It's the only old wolf samurai show I know. You gotta watch some of the older stuff. Anime these days is just... You know... Uh, no? Well, we need to do that too. One of these nights, we're gonna go on a marathon of Ganbate Ni. The hotel Wi-Fi is good enough for that, I think. Well, I never really watched anime, even if Ichi whatever it was wasn't that bad. The idea of staying up late with Jenna watching old foreign cartoons sounds like a lot of fun. Wanna join us, TJ? TJ looks up from his phone. Huh? What? Do you want to watch anime with us? Uh, sure. Why not? Hey, no phones. I tease him, reaching forward and take it from him. I thought that was only for the hike. I glance over to the screen, expecting to see some Christian social group or something, but instead, it's a text thread from Leo. Yo, Tej, where you at? Hi, Leo, we're hiking. You going somewhere after that? Yeah, the diner. Did you want to meet us there? Is Chase going to? Yeah, he's here. Are you reading my text? That's really rude. I look up at TJ, who's glaring at me from across the table. I look back down at the phone. All right, on my way. Leo's coming? Yep, he's been messaging me all day. Jenna and I look at each other, both of our brows raised. 
What? But that's when Leo's van pulls up in front of the diner and I hear Jenna sigh loudly. Leo's bulky form bounces off the truck, doing a little jog up to the diner. The bell on the door rings as Leo walks in, all smiles. Hey, Leo! TJ. Leo immediately squeezes into the booth next to me, almost sandwiching me between him and the window. Chase, what's up? He wraps a big arm around my neck and yanks me roughly into a hug, forcing a little squeak out of my throat. See, this is how it should be. We came here to hang out, not break up into little groups and fight. That was Flynn's fault. Jenna says it quietly, eyeing Leo's arm around my neck. Yeah, well, I'm going to get him to apologize. Things take a little bit of time, you know? Jenna doesn't say anything, instead choosing to look over the menu, even though we're already ordered. You had fun hiking? Leo turns his goofy tongue out, smiling at me. I'm about to answer, but that's when his face changes, and I see his nose twitching. You smell like a girl. His head snaps to Jenna, and it's instantly obvious as to what he's thinking. Jenna, who's looking up now, just smiles sweetly, not trying to explain the situation at all. Leo tenses up, arm tightening around my neck, almost choking me. I forgot my musk off, so Jenna let me hers. Leo looks back at me, and I can tell he's trying to decide whether or not to believe me. TJ, though, for once, chimes in with something useful, cheerfully unaware. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Sorry, Chase. He looks at me apologetically, but honestly, I could kiss him right now. Leo relaxes a bit, but his ears are still pointed straight up, a sure sign that he's still tense. All right, well, next time you go, I'm coming too. Anyway, I'm planning Carl's birthday tomorrow. What? That's like a month away. Yeah, well, there's not much else to do. Jenna leans back in her seat and folds her ears down. That's really short notice, Leo. Couldn't you have told us this before we came here to prepare? Well, I was planning to do that today, but you guys just took off without telling me. I don't have a gift. Leo rubs his face. We still got time to do that. Just wanted to tell you guys what's up. We chat for a while longer, then we get our food. Leo orders a milkshake and hangs out with us the whole time. Usually, I would love to have Leo around, but something about this feels forced and awkward, and Jen has gone pretty quiet. Leo doesn't let go of my neck the entire time. Wednesday. The ill-fated party day. Hey. He clutches a cell phone, the screen shattered, and the metallic innards exposed. No texting. Let's talk. But I can't. Have you decided on what you're going to do after school? Don't worry about it right now. I've still got a few months to decide. Going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Despite being shattered, the phone in his hand lights up. I see something flash on the screen. Hey boy, where you at? I miss you. Calling now. Call from Jared. Ah, oh, fuck. And I'm gonna leave it there for now. If you recall, I'm trying to figure out where Jenna's thing is, um, that would be, actually, no, you guys didn't see that because that wasn't public. Um, that is from Leo's short story called Phone. But I can't tell you guys about that because that's, that's for patrons only. Patrons of Echo Project. Not, I don't have a patron myself. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. Well, thank you guys for listening slash watching or just having me in the background in general. Um, if you guys would like to play any of the Echo Project games, there would be links in the description down below. And you can feel free to support them on Patreon to see those short stories that I cannot 
put up on YouTube because it feels kind of, you know, bad since it's something you kind of have to pay for in order to read, even though you could probably find it online somewhere. But anyways, uh, yeah, we will try to continue these short episodes throughout the week, and I might just do like one day, then one day off, one day, one day off. So yeah, to try to stretch out this because her story isn't done yet, and I don't know how many more months they need in order to finish this, which hopefully is just maybe two at the most. But yeah, because the story itself because already feels almost finished, but we'll see. So yeah, until next time, and bye-bye.